Hello, my name's Sage and this video is directed towards Brittany Simon, so I'm going to be addressing it as if I'm talking to Brittany. So I recently watched one of your videos and it's about you um, talking about a situation in which you were uh, labelled privileged and the person uh, was, I can't remember the exact situation in which you, the word privileged was being used. Uh, but I think it had something to do with the fact that you didn't want to vote for Trump or Biden and that person was saying that you have privilege in that situation to be able to do that. Um, I wanted to talk about some of my experiences as a human being on this planet um, and how I see privilege because I feel like, you don't. I mean you don't have to listen to what I have to say, but I feel like you are missing something as a human being in terms of this topic and I think that's completely normal because we're human beings we're gonna miss things sometimes we're not we don't know everything um so yeah let's let me tell you a little bit about myself um yeah my name's sage i'm 19. i was an emancipated minor at the age of 17. i live alone because i was in a situation where the council i live in the uk the council um, saw that I was really in need of housing and so they housed me um, and I'm very fortunate for that because there are a lot of people that need housing that aren't getting it. I grew up in a working class household with a single parent. My family is working class. I'm the first person to go to university in my family. I, um, I didn't have the best childhood growing up. My mum was neglectful and abusive, but I'm lucky now to have a relationship with my mum where we get along and we're talking and she apologised and I apologised for some things that I did because I wasn't perfect either. And I'm just in a better position overall. And um, yeah, so I think that's most things I really need. Oh yeah, I'm black obviously, but I think I don't really need to spell out the obvious things about me. I'm also queer as hell. I was, I used to identify as non-binary, but I'm currently questioning my gender again. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is me. Um, the reason why I think these things are important because they shape how I see privilege. I live in the UK, which is predominantly white. As a black person, you know, we, aren't the best treated in this country. I grew up um, not too long ago, um, so I can't imagine how it's like for older generations. But for me, I know as a child, like we had this family that lived next door to us. Their children used to have to sneak me into the back of their garden because their parents didn't want us talking to each other. They wouldn't let me touch their dolls. I didn't understand why, but when their white friends would come round, they were able to play with their dolls. I wasn't allowed inside of the house. I used to get picked on for my hair. Um, I have had run-ins with the police, especially when I was younger and going through that time with my mum and it was really difficult. And, you know, I have experienced at the age of 14 being pushed down by two police officers to the point where you can barely breathe because your chest is in the deck. Uh, I've had experiences where I, me and my family have been attacked by a white family, a fully grown white man who is like, who was like an ex-veteran, um, and not an ex-veteran, an ex, uh, an ex-army person, soldier, um, and he was hitting me and my little cousins who were like 13 and 14, and when the police came to that situation, they looked at us, they saw that we were hurt, they flashed a light in our face, told us to go on our way. They also treated it as if it was us that instigated the um, situation, which wasn't the case. Um, so black people aren't very well treated in this country and racism is still very much alive, even though like I am like a part of the youngest generation and I've even experienced some pretty crappy things. Um, as a queer person, I wasn't necessarily accepted by all of my family members. I'm quite fortunate that because most of my family grew up in the UK, which is pretty, um, at the moment is pretty um, okay with like gay and trans people. Um, but they were like, yeah, sure, whatever. 
uh, but other family members that grew up in Barbados and sometimes come to visit, they were, <laughs> they were very against it. I remember uh, one time they made me cry in front of my like little cousins because they were telling me how I was going to go to hell and, and things like that. So I've had that experience and yeah, I mean, it hasn't... Mm. I don't know I did experience some bullying as well like I couldn't do PE because in the changing rooms I'd get picked on so badly and people would basically sexually harass me because I they knew that I identified as gay and so they were like trying to make me uncomfortable and they and it worked so I stopped doing PE um there's been a lot of situations that have shaped my understanding of you know the fact that being a minority in a society where they cater and create and shape everything to fit and work for the majority um, can affect your life, the quality of life that you're able to live and make it more difficult sometimes for you to create a better life for yourself. I've had that experience. So I would consider myself to be someone who doesn't have a whole lot of privilege in regards to the fact that I'm plaque, I'm queer. I, well, I grew up in a working class family. I'm not sure since I got into university if I am working class anymore. The UK is kind of strange. They have money um, to give to people who are don't necessarily have the funds to pay for university outright. So a lot of people can get into university if their grades are good enough. Um, which I managed to do and hopefully going forward I will be able to get myself out of you know the working class sort of like you know living on toast kind of life that I was living at one point. Um, so yeah I'm someone who doesn't have a lot of privilege and I can recognise in you having had certain experiences have having um you know being a woman being a middle eastern woman at that living in a predominantly white america um being queer um other things as well i can understand that your life experiences the things that you were born into have created a situation where you're someone who doesn't have a whole lot of privilege but you still have privilege you have privilege because there are some things in which, you know, society, you fit into society. For example, like, let me just use me as an example. I am black and I've got a tan right now, but I'm relatively light skin. And I can recognise that I benefit from colourism to a degree as a light skinned person and that people will view darker skinned black people possibly differently to how they view me and in that circumstance I have privilege as an able-bodied person um, who doesn't have any mental disabilities um, I can navigate society not having to think about if the venues that I will be going into have um, setups which allow me to get there like I don't need to worry about if they have disability access and and such and and there are so many other things that I'm not aware of as an able bodied person um, navigating society that people who aren't able body bodied have to navigate I'm relatively neuro neurotop um, typical although I do have mental health issues and I have attempted to take my life in the past and I have been in that dark <laughs> hole uh, that you sometimes find yourself in. But I have privilege. Everyone, everyone has privilege. So when I say that you have privilege, I'm not using that as a term to try and be malice towards you or say that you're someone who has had it easy. I don't use that term in that way. What I, the way that I use it is, and I think a lot of people use it, possibly the person who wrote this message to you telling you that you are privileged used it in this way. I use privilege as a case by case um, basis um, because I think it is more 
intricate and detailed and complicated than a lot of people mark it up to be. You can be someone who doesn't have a whole lot of privilege and live a really great life. You can be someone who has a whole lot of privilege and live a really, live a really shitty life. Privilege is about the advantages or disadvantages that you are given based on the society that you were born into and grow up, um, grow up in. And so privilege only affects your life to a degree and it's up to the person um, with those certain privileges or um, I don't know the word but opposite of privileges but whatever that is to do what they need to do in order to live a happy life so I, I don't see you as a person who has you know not had that much privilege now living a happy life as someone who you know is really privileged that doesn't change the fact like the fact that you're living a happy life doesn't change the fact that you've gone through all of these things and you was born into a society where you were set up in some ways possibly to fail or to have a difficult life it doesn't change that and so I guess when I explain this this as how I use the word privilege people might be wondering oh, why do you use the word privilege what's the point in using the word privilege I use the word privilege because when I use that word I expect people to self-reflect and think about the areas in which they may have an advantage and they may want to use those areas in which they have an advantage to educate other people or to help others around them and maybe to humble themselves because us being able to recognise that we may have an advantage over other people isn't to say like, oh, all of our hard work means nothing. It just means that we should be more understanding when people who don't have the privileges that we do are speaking to us and saying, you haven't had the same struggle that I have. This is difficult. Can you help me or can you reflect on what you're doing because it may be harming me? That's the reason why I use the word privilege. Um, and I think that everyone can do that. I think everyone can do that. Unless, you know, I haven't met someone who hasn't been able to do that. I can't imagine what their life must be like. They probably do exist. But from what I've seen, Everyone has some form of privilege and everyone can do what I've just said, you know, I'm using that term for. And so coming back to the main point of this video, the reason why I'm responding to you, especially on camera, is because you said that people are hiding behind, you know, pictures anonymously on the internet and that's not fair. And I recognise that, so I'm going old school YouTube and I'm making a video reply. But equally... When that person said and used that word privilege, it's possible that they weren't attacking you as a human being and saying that everything in your life has been perfect. I'm also saying that in this specific circumstance, you do have some privilege. And that's all I wanted to highlight. It doesn't discredit everything that you've gone through. And also that thing that you said about the fact that you being a sexual assault survivor and someone saying that the fact that you were able to get over your trauma and move on uh, was privilege that's wrong there are definitely people using that term even if it um they're trying to recognize that there are people who necessarily might have advantages over other people um these dogs <laughs> using this term in such a spiteful way that really just there are sometimes circumstances where someone might have privilege and it's not necessarily to mention it because it doesn't need to be mentioned and then there are people who will amount something or someone's hard work to privilege When really there's someone who isn't privileged, they're just someone who's worked really fucking hard. And I think that's what's happened to you when it comes to your sexual assault story. Because no one 
no one has the right to say that to you that is not fair at all um and it's wrong and i think that people that are using using their words like that should really reflect on why they're saying that and i think it does go back to what you said about when that's happening i think they're hurt people hurting other people um yeah uh yeah the other thing that i want to end this video on is if anyone who supports you Brittany if anyone who supports you I know that I haven't asked you Brittany um for your permission to do this and I may be overstepping a boundary but I'm gonna do it anyway because I think it's wrong I'm very privileged to live in the UK where healthcare is free the fact that there are people in America who are having to you know be worried about the fact that they won't be able to be seen with medical care in this pandemic it's just wrong so if you ever came out and said hey guys i have covid um i'm probably going to die like you actually find out that you have covid i would set a go go find me up like i don't i wouldn't even ask you i would just do it because it's wrong that people aren't able to afford free healthcare. And the fact that free healthcare for everyone is a radical idea just blows my mind. Something's gone wrong in human humanity at some point, somewhere down the line. People have started valuing capital goods and capitalism and money over the livelihood and lives of real people. So yeah, I would do that. But right now we don't know if you have COVID. We don't know if you're gonna need a medical attention. We know that you're gonna to have to take um, do a test. Um, but right now, and again, I might be overstepping a boundary, but I'm gonna do it anyway for the reasons that I've stated. If you're watching this video and you support Brittany Simon, go to their Patreon. I'll link it, link it down below. I'm also gonna to link to the original video that I'm responding to. And I'm probably gonna put this video in the comments, hoping that she will watch this. I don't need a reply. I hope that she watches it. Um, but yeah, if if you can, if you can go to our Patreon and don't um, and give some money at the tier that you want, I think that might be helpful. That's I don't know if it actually will because I haven't spoke to her, but I'm hoping in some way that that might help. I'm assuming that it will help a little bit, so I will do that. Um, yeah. I don't know if anything I have said is of value to you or anyone else watching this video but I just thought I would put my two cents in and I put, thought I'd put it as a video because especially what you said about people hiding behind an anonymity. God I cannot speak today. <laughs> um, yeah okay. I hope you get well. I hope that nothing is wrong. I hope you don't have Covid. Um, yeah. Have a good day and I hope that what I've said is of value.